skateboarding makes its long-awaited Olympic debut in Tokyo this summer. And like the action sports that came before it, there are bound to be some growing pains, like snowboarding and freestyle skiing, now two mainstays at the Winter Olympics. Skateboarding, sporting, and cultural roots are, well, mm, anti-rules. So the question is, how do you keep the purity of the sport intact while integrating it into an Olympic environment? How do you judge a sport that's as much about style as it is technique? We've seen it done before, but arguably not to a sport with such a laid-back vibe. Hi everyone, I'm Andy. Now before we get into it, let's get things straight. In skateboarding, anything goes. There is no out of bounds to skaters. If you can reach it, you can skate it. You might be accustomed to skaters around your neighborhood, mm, taking over stair railings and the curb in front of your house, but also at skate parks. Wow, so much going on. And this is where the events of Tokyo will take their inspiration. There will be four events in total this summer. Both men and women will compete in street and park for a chance at a gold medal. Canada will be sending three men to Tokyo as no Canadian women skaters qualify. Matt Berger and Mickey Papa are Canada's two street skaters. They thrive in environments that favor creative uses of the elements over just speed and height. Street skating is arguably the most technical, where anything with enough imagination is a prop for skaters. Andy Anderson is Canada's park specialist. His style is as inventive as it is risky. So watch out for some distinct throwback tricks thrown into his runs. In park skating, the lines are a bit more colored in. In park sessions, you'll see many skaters enter the competition area in similar places, in similar ways. These drop-in spots give contestants opportunities to gain speed as they go through their runs in order to score more big points with bigger jumps and tricks as time passes. Beyond adapting real-world environments to create closed competition circuits that are challenging, varied, and entertaining, another big test for Olympic skateboarding is making sure every athlete is judged fairly. It all comes down to the judges at the end of the day. We all skate so differently. Like, it's like judging an art form. Like, you got a bunch of different paintings up, and someone says, that one's the best one, and someone else says, no, that one's the best one. It's, it's a really difficult thing to judge. Progression over perfection is with is in the judging criteria for skateboarding, which means the judges have it written on their list. A new trick this year will score higher than last year's trick done perfectly. Now that we've got the nuts and bolts out of the way, let's check in with Mickey Papa on what he's doing to prep for Tokyo. Hey guys, this is Mickey Papa, and I will be skating from Canada in street skateboarding at Tokyo 2021. I've been skating for about 19 years now. Do I have a signature trick? Throughout the years, I've kind of emphasized certain tricks, so it depends on what point in my career you would ask. But uh, one I do do a lot is a uh, Nollie 180 nose grind, back to regular in contests where I pop off the front of the board and turn backward and I grind backwards on the truck and then bring it all the way back around. So Mickey Papa coming in. Oh, wow. that's one of his specialties right there. Did I ever expect skating to be added to the Olympics? That's, uh, that's an interesting question. You could see things progressing and evolving and then to um, you know where it's at now on the world stage and having every country involved uh, that can get access to skateboarding at least. It's not something I really anticipated, but it is you know such an opportunity and amazing honor to be able to go out there and represent it at the first one for skateboarding, that's for sure. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that uh, we have a small bubble of Canadian skaters that made the cut into the Olympics, and it's even more unreal to know have known them for the last, you know, almost 20 years, and seeing them grow up as kids, and you know, watching Andy skate the bowl um, just when he was a little guy, like back in the day, to where he's at now, it's just like an unreal progression. Same with Matt, just this kid from Kamloops that, you know, he used to come stay on my my floor pretty much with me and like when I lived with my grandmother and just we'd go skate throughout the whole city and you know he'd just like want to come down and skate the street spots in Vancouver so it's insane that we're all just from like a small radius in Canada and like we're all going to be out there in Tokyo representing for Canada. Okay so now you're thinking what does a good run look like? There are some universal truths that everybody should agree on. 
speed, rotation, difficulty of trick, distance covered in the air, or grinding an obstacle. Basically, more is more. Still, there are some intangibles to consider. Here's Adam Higgins to explain what makes judging skateboarders so difficult. Street skating and park skating are different, but essentially the judging is very similar. Street skating, the riders do two runs and they get scored on an overall impression, and then they do five tricks where they get scored on each individual attempt at the feature. In park skateboarding, it's two or three runs for 45 seconds and they look at the entire run. Nice. But essentially it always comes down to how difficult the moves you're doing, how well you're executing them, and did you land them? Oh, in street skating, ones who are most creative stand out the most. Typically that fancy, difficult, you know, trick or what's perceived as be the most difficult trick of the day usually wins. Does it always be at rewarded against something that might be perceived to be a little bit more difficult or a little more standard in the skate world? Not always. Park skating is judged on overall impressions. They take a look at the full run that you put together and then assign a score to it. A run starts off and it's going really well. There's amazing tricks being done, huge air, everything's really difficult, but then there's a mistake in the middle somewhere and they fall. You know, that's gonna get deducted. Will it score higher than a, than a basic run with some limited tricks? Yeah, it might, but a solid run with great tricks and skating for the full time should get rewarded. Yeah, everybody might have mixed opinions, you know, it's a judge sport and it's, it's skateboarding. Skateboarding means something different to everyone. It's almost an art form. It is. It is an art form. But when you put it in the sport, you got to put a judging criteria down. And sometimes not everybody agrees on what's the hardest thing to do or what looks the best or what's the right style. But that's why there's a panel of judges. And ideally, this panel of judges can come together, sort it out, and make sure that the right people win and get the right scores on the right day. So now you know the who, the what, the how, and the why. Men's skateboarding kicks off Sunday, July 25th in Ariake with the women's heat starting the next day. And if all goes well, who knows? Maybe we'll see more skateboarding events added to future games, like vert skating. Here's a crazy example. Check out Danny Wee jumping over the Great Wall of China. And don't try this at home, folks.